everyone! Thank you so much for joining me here for another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Anais and I make videos related to Kubernetes and the Cloud Native Ecosystem. And this is a really exciting video because I'm going to show you hardware for the first time. Let me introduce you to... <laughs> here we go! Hello! My little pie cluster! Look at that! Um, Okay, that was that was its moment. Uh, the camera doesn't focus anymore. Um, no, so this is my Kubernetes cluster. Let's see if it focuses again. And I just built this Kubernetes cluster. I just put it together. Now you might be wondering if you're familiar with Raspberry Pis, since this is a Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster. How did I find all of the different components? Um, where do I get them? Because nobody can currently find Raspberry Pis. They are very expensive and they are largely out of stock right now. So um, I actually bought the components two years ago. <laughs> Don't judge me. Um, so I bought them uh, a while ago. And I think even my employer at the time paid for them. So a huge shout out to Codefresh. Codefresh is a CICD pipeline platform. Uh, it's largely focused on GitOps, integrating heavily with Agro CD, and has great pipeline DevOps tooling. So do check out Codefresh. Thank you so much for sponsoring my Kubernetes cluster Codefresh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, that was that. No, so um, I bought the components a year ago, two years ago, when I was working at Codefresh. So I know I have the cluster and I finally put it together. And in this video, I'm just gonna show you how I put it together and the different components used. So this is like a really straightforward video, kind of, I hope. So here's the cluster, right? Let me just make sure it's focusing. Okay, so this is the cluster. I walked my dog earlier, so don't mind my dirty fingernails, please. Um, this is the cluster. And here, four Raspberry Pis, Raspberry Pi 4, B series. Um, also, everything is linked in the description below. Um, so this is the cluster for Raspberry Pis. One, two, three, four. And this is the master node, the main node. Node one, node two, node three. Okay, this is how I named them as well. I'm going to show you the cluster as like in kubectl in a second. Then here are four USB-C power cables plugged in. And they are plugged into this power station as well. Okay, they are all plugged in there. And as you can see, the cables got too long. Um, but this is ultimately the, the components that I have here. And then in addition to that, I have this case. And this case has, as you can see, these are the fans. One, two, three, uh, four. The, the fans <laughs> um, <laughs> on the case. And if you see some, if you hear some scratching noise in the background, that's also my puppy. So apologies for that. Um, this is like real life here, dirty fingernails. Sorry about that. It's not very girly. Um, <laughs> anyway, so this is my cluster. Okay, this is really just a case. Then four nodes, and then here the power cables and the power station. Now, in addition to that, you can see here in these tiny slots. There are the SD cards inside. Here you can see the SD cards. Okay, I'm gonna link all the hardware, everything used down below. Okay, oh my God, I should have really cleaned my fingernails. Now I'm embarrassed. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that happens when you have to pick up dirt from your puppy, and then you don't think about cleaning your nails after the walk. Anyway, you don't mind. Okay, this is the cluster. Awesome, cool. We have the cluster. Now, um, what I did. I'm going to show you. So next thing is I needed to know how do I install my, uh, micro or any other um, Kubernetes distribution on the SD cards to put those into the pies, right? Like otherwise the Raspberry Pis don't know what to do, right? They're just dumb. So I was like, okay, how do I tell the Raspberry Pis how to have the right software and operating system, everything really to do what I needed to do. And I'm not good with any of those things, okay? I am, I'm not too good with that. I'm not too good with networking. I'm not too good with anything Linux related. I'm still trying, okay? I'm like, this is me trying. So, but I knew I wanted to use microcades. There were two options, either K3S to use that or to use microcades because I wanted to have something very lightweight on the Raspberry Pi. So I have as much space as possible to actually run deployments. Um, 
And the thing is, I'm more familiar with microcades and then with K3S. Um, and they have really great guides that I'm going to show you in a second as well um, that really helped me. So I probably clicked on the first link more or less. Um, maybe not the first link, <laughs> but maybe tutorials. Ubuntu, how to Raspberry Pi, maybe this one. Is this the right tutorial? So this is the tutorial I found after Googling. Okay, that's basically what I did. I'm showing you the process. How to build a Raspberry Pi q and &E cluster using microkits. And I really, I followed those, I, I followed those, I followed the setup. Now you could use also the hardware, like what they recommended. Here's them building the case. Um, the only thing when you build the case is you have to make sure you plug in the um, cables for the fans in the right way. And I was like, I had to Google that, okay? So if this is your cluster, people, you have to plug it into the red cable first and then the black cable. I hope you can see that. And I plug it into those things on the side, okay? That's where you plug it in apparently. Um, I found some tutorial where they also had a blue cable, I think, but I don't have a blue cable, so I just plugged in the black and the red cable. Um, cool, so you have the cluster, right? Okay, so here, um, basically, <laughs> you first have to set up um, the SD cards on the pies before you can actually, and like everything on the pies, um, before you can actually install microkits. And this is the other tutorial that they have linked here. They have this tutorial linked here, how to install Ubuntu servers on your Raspberry Pis. And you basically follow this tutorial. So you use the Raspberry Pi specific software for that. Um, you can download it for your operating system, Linux, Windows, Mac. Um, and then you go on general purpose operating system. Then you select the latest one, but the server one, that's important. Um, and I chose 64-bit um, and the server one and uh, the latest. That's basically it. And then you choose the SD card that's plugged into your computer. Then you, before you do anything, you have to go on advanced options. And this is where you tell um, the host name. I put different host names for each Pi. You should, you should use the same one. Um, and then username. I think the, the host name should be the same. Anyway, and then you set the username and the password that allows you to SSH into the Pi stem. You will use that. So remember the password because on one of the Pi's I set the password wrong and the name. Had to redo it because I forgot the password. Anyway, remember the password, something as simple as that. <laughs> and then you also configure access to your VLAN, um, to your Wi-Fi because I don't have Ethernet running across my house. Um, and I don't have like a plug that you can use in your plug, like electricity plug. I think they're like plugs for ethernet, but I don't think it works in my old house that I'm living in. Not sure, didn't try. So I didn't want to plug the Pi cluster directly into the router. So it's connected via Wi-Fi to my router, not directly plugged in. Ideally you want to have ethernet and a managed switch. So that's like another component, hardware component you could get, a managed switch, I don't have that. So. Then you have that, you have uh, the SD cards configured, right? Then you put them into, okay? You put them into the cluster, into uh, each Pi. And this is where it gets more difficult because once they are in each Pi, like in each cluster, um, each Pi of the cluster, you turn the cluster on and the Pi's should connect automatically to your internet. And then you have to find the your router your router login uh, the dashboard for your wi-fi router and on that you can set static ips um, so you should then set um, the ips for each pi to be static so they don't change whenever they disconnect and connect okay so you want to do that next um, so once you have done that you want to before you go to install desktop you want to go back to the tutorial and after you've set up each Pi, you want to follow the microcades tutorial here. I followed it exactly step by step. I chose this microcades command, but instead of 1.17, which is an outdated Kubernetes version, I used 1.26. So you do that for each Pi and on each Pi, 
and for that you have to have the the AP the APs for each pi and you ideally and you SSH into each pi and you run those commands okay and then once you have set every pi with micro kits so you have a, basically four single node clusters now on every of those clusters of every Raspberry Pi running that's when you choose one node to be the main node and you make all of the other nodes being the worker nodes on that cluster and that's pretty much it that's all I did to set up my Raspberry Pi cluster so then I copy pasted the kubeconfig from within the cluster onto my host machine so I have here now the kubeconfig and I can do export um, kubeconfig equals and then config and now it's connected to my to the config to the cube config of my micro kits cluster and i can do cube cube cuddle get notes and i can see all of my different nodes as you can see i have pi zero pi one pi two pi three and um i can connect to it now if i would want to go for example to the main node which is pi zero i do ssh uh, pi zero at pi zero and then I provide the mm, password and now I'm on that note so now I'm directly on this cluster on the main note here right I don't know if you can see it anyway um, but obviously I don't want to do anything there yet I just have to do it in case I want to change anything directly through micro kits then I'm going directly onto the note and for example, enabling, disabling add-ons or things like that. That's another great thing that microcades add-ons. Um, it has a vast add-ons ecosystem. If I could just list the add-ons here. So here are some of the add-ons and some of the commands. Um, I know how to list the add-ons actually. So here's some of the official add-ons. Um, for example, you want to ideally um, enable a DNS. So you can do sudo microcades enable DNS and that's going to install um, DNS stuff like Calico. And then you can also install Helm and do lots of things, lots of nice things uh, directly through microcades. And this is really all I did. Um, yeah. All of the tutorials, everything used is linked below in the description. Um, do check that out. I will do more videos on like how I'm evolving my cluster over time. I'm going to use this cluster for my bachelor thesis, like mentioned in my previous live update video, in my talk it talk video. This dog, anyway. Um, <laughs> hope she wasn't too annoying. Um, do let me know if there's anything specific you want to see. Um, but yeah, this is going to be an evolving series. So I'm going to like show you how I debug things, how we're fixing things on the cluster. I already had today a debugging session with somebody else because something wasn't working like expected on the cluster. The beautiful thing is that, more or less beautiful thing is, that Raspberry Pis aren't used in production by companies. So a lot of things are flaky, meaning um, you will probably have to do lots of debugging on like edge cases on your specific installations. We're just going to teach you a lot about Kubernetes and Linux. So yeah, um, you could also use instead of Raspberry Pis, you could also use other machines as like your notes. Um, there are other people who use other kinds of machines that then may be more accessible right now in the market as well. Um, but this is how I built my cluster and I'm probably going to go and clean my fingernails before my next call. Uh, so that more people are going to judge me. Um, anyway, I hope this was useful. If it was and you would like to stay up to date with the series or with other series or other videos on my channel, then please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Please, please, please. It would mean a lot to me. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely morning, day, afternoon or evening. The depending on wherever you are. Um, I hope to see one of my next videos. Bye bye.